Here is what you missed this morning on the Catholic Morning Show. And now joined by Mr. Mark Breed. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Longtime supporter of the station. Uh, personally, before you and I were able to uh, cultivate a, a working relationship uh, a couple of years ago, as you assumed the uh, position of executive director there at uh, Catholic Tuition Organization. And uh, again, another one of those entities that uh, I, I like to say we get to be uh, fellow workers in the vineyard with, right? Absolutely. And doing, um, doing work that not everyone wants to do, but work that is vital and necessary to uh, being the hands and feet of Christ. And for us, the, the even the voice of Christ here at the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. But uh, talk a little bit how you got involved with the Catholic Tuition Organization. Well, you know, uh, several years ago, I um, spent a lot of time in the Des Moines area. Um, then I came back because, uh, well, Gene Wells Till said, you know what, I'm going to retire, mm-hmm. and I'd like to uh, think that maybe it might be a position you'd be interested in. And I grew up in Des Moines. I uh, went to Holy Trinity and Dowling, and it was an easy fit for me. I really, I believe in Catholic education. I know the importance of it. Um, I was a, a recipient of uh, some help when I was trying to go to Catholic education, you know, mm-hmm. because my dad died when I was pretty young, and my mom said, hey, you know, um, you're going to have to figure out with us, how we're going to get you through this education, you know, and we were blessed that we had a parish priest who said, don't worry, we're going to make it happen. I had to work. I had to do some things, though. (laughs) I worked for the parish, did some other things, but I was able to get that quality education. And I was I was pretty blessed by that. And uh, but you were you'd done fundraising before. Mm -hmm. uh, And uh, so you were not new to this type of work. But uh, uh, talk about maybe the difference from what you were doing prior to what what, what it looked like for your time at uh, CTO. Well, you know, my career spanned (laughs) over almost 40 years now in fundraising. And when I first started out, I was working for United Way and it was kind of an accident. I got out of Drake University and uh, I answered a blind ad in the Des Moines Register for a campaign fundraiser. I thought it was a political campaign. It turned out to be for the United Way campaign, and that really started my fundraising career. And then over the years, um, I ended up moving to Waterloo area, and I uh, ended up uh, one of the people on the board of uh, United Way there was uh, Father Walter Brunken, who was the head of Columbus Catholic High School. And so I worked for Columbus. Uh, he, he recruited me to come to work for the church because he knew my education. He knew kind of the, the background that I had, and he knew uh, the importance of Catholic education was to me and my family. So I did that. And then eventually I came back to the Des Moines area um, and uh, got my master's degree. And then I started working for um, uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation. And that was uh, really my really where I really uh, cut my teeth, so to speak, um, because uh, back then we were we were very small. Um, there was no Jolly Holiday Lights. There was none of those kinds of things. And I had the opportunity to, to really uh, grow in that position. And then eventually I went on to uh, Special Olympics and worked there for eight years and uh, was the executive, well, the president of Special Olympics eventually for Iowa. And I just had a great love for working with people and helping, especially helping kids in particular. And uh, uh, Back uh, while I was there, there was an opportunity to go and uh, start the Catholic Foundation of Southwest Iowa. Bishop Pates came to, uh, through my brother, who was a deacon in the church, as you know, and said, hey, you know, is your brother interested in doing something like this? And I was. And so I I went there and uh, helped start the Catholic Foundation of Southwest Iowa. And that was a great experience for me. And working for the church was one of the best experiences. Again, I had some experience, obviously, when I worked at Columbus High School. And so it was really a, a great transition for me, and I spent a number of years there. And uh, eventually, I ended up um, down in Florida for a period of time. We decided, thank God I'm not in Florida right now, by the way, uh, because uh, we would leave, we lived outside of Orlando, and I worked for an organization called Give Kids the World, which was a organization that uh, really was an, uh, kind of a uh, partner with Make-A-Wish Foundation, since I had had all those years with Make-A-Wish. And, Anyway, long story short, um, we decided because our ki- grand- kids started having a bunch of grandkids, and we've got a lot of them, um, that we needed to get back to the Midwest, and we needed, to, and ideally, we could get back to Iowa. Uh, I ended up in uh, Atchison, Kansas, and uh, St. Benedict's Abbey, and that was a great experience. A- Aiden's cheering the Aiden background. Aiden is he's, actually he's, he's like graduate. jumping up and down. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I, I worked for St. Benedict's Abbey for a number of years, and then Jean says she's going to retire, and my, my wife's like. We need to get back to Iowa because we want to be with our kids and we want to be with our grandkids. And it was just a great fit for me. 
That, you know, that's, uh, that some of the entities that you mentioned there at Make-A-Wish Foundation, United Way, th- those are huge uh, outfits or organizations mm-hmm. yeah. that uh, raise a ton of money and do a lot of good work. Uh, but, uh, you know, your time at CTO probably hasn't gone, I, I think it's fair to say, as planned. Like, it's, I don't want to, like, over-dramatize the situation, but it's kind of like Bishop Jones being appointed Jones and then COVID breaking out, right? Like, right. like you, you entered, there it was probably not um, the vision, the, the understanding how ESAs were going to play a role in the work that you do. And right. we're talking about education savings accounts. Uh, talk about a little bit uh, the challenge that you have faced with that. Well, uh, with, uh, with you that. Know, the, the challenge is that it, many of our donors think that education savings account covers everything for the kids, and it just doesn't. Right. Uh, the reality is there's, there's really two ways of looking at it. Um, education savings account um, really can be used for several things. It can be used for tuition, but it can also be used for things like tutoring and special therapies and other things like that. CTO can only be used for tuition. So when a donor gives to us, the, and we give to those children who meet the criteria, which is 400% of the federal poverty level and below. Mm-hmm. Okay, so these are families that, and our average family in CTO really only makes, uh, on average, about 200% of the federal poverty level. So they're they're really not people who have into a, a lot of uh, means. Right. And for them to be able to keep their child in Catholic education, it's a challenge. No matter no matter whether you have CTO or ESA, it's still a challenge because there's all sorts of challenges that they have with the, you know, a lot of times they're working uh, two jobs and they're doing all these things to try to keep, make ends meet. And there's always never, there's just never enough. And when it comes to things like needing, maybe your child needs some special, has some special needs or needs some special tutoring, those kind of things. Um, so right now what happens is the CTO dollars are the first dollars towards their tuition. Okay, so when a child goes to, let's say they go to, a, a, you know, um, St. Teresa's here mm-hmm. locally, and, uh, you know, they have a certain amount for tuition. If they get money from CTO, that's the first amount taken off of their tuition balance. Then the remaining would come out of their ESA account. Anything that's left over can be used for those other things that we just talked about, yeah. or it can be used for future tuition needs. And we know that the cost of tuition is not going to go down. We know that they're going to have needs farther down the road, whether they're at still at St. Teresa's or whether they choose to go to Dowling Catholic or one of those places. And so there's a lot of perception that, oh, the needs are already met, so we don't need to give anymore. And that's not the case. We just, the, the families that we talk to say it makes a huge difference for them to be able to know that they can get these other services that they need because they get the money from CTO. Mark, I know there's a lot of people really excited about what you just said, because the reason why they, they opt into the public school system is because some of those, those services, those extra services yep. that you mentioned are available, yep. right? What you're saying, what you're, what you're communicating here is that, uh, that you, with the, the Combining the the CTO gift as well as the ESA, people can keep their kids in in private education, Catholic education, and then also have some money to to put towards those services that yeah, are exactly. that, that may be so vital to, uh, to to the child's development, to their uh, to their later success in life. And, and as we talk about respect life, I, I just think what what a beautiful way to uh, recognize the dignity of the human person and affording them the opportunity to receive a Catholic education. Right. And and that's that's the you know the the crux of it. The other part of it is that we have donors that, you know, of course, one of the things that we offer that very few charities offer is that we offer the Iowa tax credit. Right. Uh, and that's 75 percent off of, you know, you, when you give a gift to us that, you know, let's say it's a thousand dollars, they get seven hundred fifty dollars back in Iowa tax credits that can be used up to five years, which a lot of people don't realize right. that rolls over. And um, the challenge has been a little bit for us is that the effective rate for Iowa taxes has gone down. Yeah. Now, that's a good thing, I think. Personally, I like I like the idea of paying less taxes, but the challenge is our donors don't need the tax credits to the level they used to need them. And that's sure. been, between that and the ESA, it's made it a little more challenging for us sure. to raise the dollars that we need to raise. The uh, uh, One of the things here at Iowa Catholic Radio, and we've been highlighting that here this morning, is we like to be a voice for nonprofits. And whether you give to Iowa Catholic Radio, which, as I mentioned, we are also in the midst of, uh, of raising funds or uh, Pulse Life or CTO, all of this work goes to uh, building up uh, our community for 
uh, for the kingdom of God. So, uh, Mark, I know that uh, part of the reason we had you on here is we talked about uh, we we've talked about your work and we want to celebrate that. But we also want to let people know there's a job opening. We got just about two minutes. Yeah. Uh, let people know uh, maybe just a quick snapshot of the job where they can learn more and apply if 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 they want to learn more about uh, supporting CTO or this job that uh, is coming open because of your, uh, your departure. Well, the best place they can learn more about CTO is CTOIOWA.org. That's the place that you can learn all about CTO. You can learn about what we do, how we help the kids, how many kids we help over 2,300 uh, kids each year that we're give, giving awards to. That's, that's significant. Um, the role of the director uh, is really to lead the effort, to go out there and meet with donors, to talk about the mission and why it's important and why it's still needed, um, to uh, help connect them with the idea that they can help these kids and their families to, to really uh, achieve great things in their lives through our Catholic education. And so, you know, the, the individual need ideally would have a bachelor's degree and maybe an education or um, could be in business or that kind of thing. They don't have to be, you know, ideally they would have some fundraising experience, but what they really need is a passion for Catholic education. Yeah. Um, that's the most important thing. You know, you have to believe in the, the product that, um, that we are providing as something better for our kids than, than just, um, uh, just uh, you know, reading, writing, and arithmetic, but we're, we're talking about the things that are, are, are bigger and more powerful. Uh, the way to find out more is just go to our website. That would be the easiest. Uh, if they want to send in a uh, resume and cover letter, they're certainly welcome to do, do that. They can send that to CTO at dmdiocese.org. Very good, Mark. Uh, a great admiration for the work you, that you've done, and I'm sure is in retirement. We'll still still find a uh, f- find a way to keep giving back, as it, it's just at the at the heart of who well, you I, are. Well, I know my sense. pastor has great plans for me. He has already <laughs> told me. He said, "Now, don't think that you're getting out of doing things." So, uh, um, so does Iowa Catholic Radio has plans for you too. <laughs> Listen to the Catholic Morning Show weekday mornings at 7 on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network, iowacatholicradio.com, or the Iowa Catholic Radio app.